We are told that this fire is spreading rapidly, mm -hmm. that there are evacuation orders in place. Level three, that means get out quickly. We're told that uh, the fire on Upper River Drive spreading rapidly, particularly to the southeast. southeast. Uh, again, this is just north of the Boulder Beach area. It started this afternoon. We understand one structure is burning or has burned as a result of this. So we're told Upper River Drive is closed between Boulder Beach to Frederick and there are level three evacuations in place south of Valley Springs, east of Minnehaha, and north of Upriver. Of course, level three evacuations, you can't get higher than that. That means get out now. That fire is burning 25 to 30 acres at last check. As we mentioned, one structure is burning. We're told this fire is moving very quickly. Creme 2's Shana Walltower is at the scene right now with the latest. Shana, what can you tell us? I've got a little bit closer to the base of the fire. Smoke is still rising high and it's spreading eastward. Um, across the fields here. We have gotten a report that one structure has been burned and there are level three evacuations that are mandatory that are set for the nearby area. Police have evacuated the nearby beach and they've demanded them to leave and they've also blocked off the nearby roads. And Whitney is here because we understand the evacuation orders that we've been talking about are now expanding. Yeah, it's moving that fast and it continues to spot ahead of itself that it just keeps growing. So they have now expanded the boundaries for these evacuations. So I want to get to those right away. So police have made us move again. So I'm at another other location now um, you can st still hear helicopters that are flying above still working to get more water over into that area the flames or the smoke has like has gotten a little bit thicker as crews are still working to battle this fire we had one structure confirmed loss and multiple structures threatened at this time I'm just listening to the radio and what they're telling me is uh, lots of structures are threatened good well thank you so much for your time Eric and when we arrived, we could see this plume of smoke behind me, give you a clear view of what we're looking at from this scene. We could see this plume of smoke from downtown Spokane today. It, it, you can see it from all over. Again, that level three evacuation for certain areas around the fire. It's about 30 to 50 acres and growing. We bring in Whitney Ward now and Whitney, we know there are multiple evacuation orders in place, but things keep changing. Yeah, it's a, it's been changing a lot here, even in the last 10 minutes or so. So I want to first start with a big picture look at the kind of area that we're looking at way over here at Argonne. That is kind of this far boundary all the way over here to Havana, which is right here. Bigelow Gulch and way down here at Upriver has been the general area, the boundary that we're talking about. Now, the level two boundary is much bigger than the level three. So let's talk about level three. I believe we have a map that will show that very clearly. The boundaries are Valley Springs, Shields Park, which is down here, uh, upriver, and then Bigelow Gulch, which is, is way up here in Francis. As you're looking at a live picture kind of at the Beacon Hill area, you can see that plume of smoke coming up. It has now grown to roughly 50 acres. Uh, the tough terrain, the steep terrain, making it difficult for ground crews in that area, and that's why they've called in air resources. If you want to take a look behind me, when we were hurt here earlier, this plume of smoke was much higher and darker. That dark smoke means it's hit possibly a structure, which we have confirmed one structure has been lost in the fire. But Eric with DNR mentioned that because of the look of this smoke, it looks like crews may have a better hold on the fire. Just about an hour ago, we said that the estimate was about 25 mm -hmm. acres. An hour later, they say it's probably around 50 mm -hmm. acres and spreading quickly. There's a north wind coming up. It's actually heading towards my home, which is about two blocks away. And uh, so at this point, my wife is headed home and I think we're thinking about evacuating. Yeah, are you worried? I mean, it's it's difficult because it's probably time to kind of get going, but it, it's worrisome. Well, you know, it certainly puts the, all those thoughts in your mind about what kinds of things do I need to collect and out of my home and get into my car so that we can be ready to leave. So that's that's definitely a concern at this point. Well, Larry, I appreciate you taking the time and I want you to get home so you Thank can you. Um, pick do that, you know, collect everything that you need. And I hope it doesn't have to come to that. Thank you so much Thank for you. talking with me. This was sent to us from a crew at the scene. It shows a tanker dropping water, what appears to be water over uh, the upriver beacon fire, as they are calling it right now. There's a lot of moving parts to this one. It's now mm -hmm. 75 to 100 acres, at least one home burned, several more threatened. Creme juice Taylor Vito is out at the scene from a different vantage point. Taylor. Well, guys, this is uh, this road to my right is Wellesley, and then that's Valley Springs Road, as you guys have been mentioning, the northern boundary of these evacuations. So as I've been here in the last 10 minutes or so getting set up, you can see cars like this one right here talking 
with uh, the Spokane police officer on scene there. Many folks are coming to this area wondering where their homes are in relation uh, or where that evacuation order is in relation to where their homes are. Some people being allowed past that road buck. Others, like uh, you see this uh, truck turning around right here, being turned around, not being allowed in. This is a tweet from Washington State DNR. Uh, as you can see, they say they have five engines there, three fire bosses and two helicopters, and that's just DNR. There are several other local crews at the scene right now fighting this fire. We're told at least nine fire departments and more on the way. We have team coverage of this fire, so we want to head out now to Creme 2's Alexa Block, who is on Columbia Drive. And Alexa, we're told you're near a housing development there. Just take a look at this scene behind me, all this smoke. And you can actually, for a while, we could actually see the flames just over this hillside, which is very concerning to people who live in this area because look, this subdivision and this neighborhood is just right here, just yards away. And so um, we've seen a lot of people driving down this road, just packing up their stuff, getting out of the area, people just trying to do anything they can to uh, protect their property as long as they can before, of course, they have to head out. And a lot of people are, are seeing this smoke. That was another thing we talked about air quality, but this is very evident from many, many miles away. We've got people down south talking about it. We've Airway Heights, mm -hmm. um, way east of the valley. Everyone is seeing this plume of smoke, this plume of smoke, and talking about what a big fire this is. And it just continues to get worse. And as we look at this Alexa's camera again, you can see already um, what what it is doing to that entire area. We understand she's in an area where she just had to move mm -hmm. because they are concerned about power lines mixing with the flames there and they could come down. So Alexa is at the scene right now with the latest Alexa. Honestly, um, I'm going to say I'm still a bit shaken up. We were under we weren't under, but we were pretty close to this power line here on Columbia Drive and someone saw it shaking and everyone just yelled line, 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 line. And so, of course, my photographer and I got up, moved our stuff back as far as we could. And I just have to say that that was gave me quite a scare. I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth here, and that's just another uh, note to the dangers that are out here right now and the conditions that uh, our fire crews are dealing with right now. One of the difficult things about fighting this fire that DNR told us was just simply the terrain. It's steep terrain, it's rocky, so for crews on the ground, it's difficult to get to the exact fire line to help fight this fire. So that's why you see the helicopter drops and the tanker drops, including that one that you just saw. Uh, here's this, this is visible satellite imagery. Here's the fire. I've, now I've added that icon. That's not being picked up by the satellite imagery, but you can see all of this, which looks like cloud cover. That's not, that's all smoke. And because the wind is blowing out of the south up towards the north, you can see that that's the corridor that the, uh, the smoke is going from. Uh, at nighttime, we tend to see our winds begin to shift a bit and come out of the north. And so that means that's gonna begin to infiltrate more into the Spokane Valley. So it's just a bad situation anyway, you look at it. I mean, here we are at almost seven o'clock, four minutes away from seven o'clock, and we're still at 93 degrees. We have a live picture right now out at Felt's Field. They are also being impacted by the smoke. The air traffic is seeing some delays because of the smoke in the area. Of course, not safe to take off and land when uh, the runway is smoky. Uh, we want to tell you about uh, some information we have regarding a shelter that has been set up, a Red Cross shelter. It's at Bowdish Middle School. Uh, it looks to be opening at around 730 this evening, so about 15 minutes from now. Uh, according to a tweet earlier that we saw from Spokane County Emergency Management, pets are welcome at this shelter. So if you have to evacuate and you don't know what to do with your mm -hmm. pet, apparently they are welcome at this emergency shelter. That's a big deal because mm -hmm. oftentimes pets aren't welcome. So we know you don't want to leave your buddies at, back at home right. in the danger. So again, pets welcome there. So let's take a look at some of the videos that I've seen. This shows, first of all, the terrain. This is from the fire district uh, firefighters in District 8. This kind of gives you an idea. There's a lot of fencing in that area, a lot of trees, a lot of rocks. You can see the fire burning there in the background. This is just a very small taste of what kind of terrain those firefighters are going after. Alexa Block was actually the one who tweeted this video. This is actually a retardant drop, but what was so interesting to me was look how close all of those houses are. Mm -hmm. So many houses that are close to this area that is at risk. 
this has been uh, kind of the constant theme is that this is not a huge fire, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people and mm -hmm. homes in this area. This caught my eye as well. Bryce Williams from the National Weather Service tweeted this picture of the plume of smoke over the skyline in downtown. Um, you can see it just above the highway there, I-90 right there at the bottom of that picture. A big plume of smoke that, as we have said, it seems to be getting better in some places, mm -hmm. um, but in other places, the smoke is still very, very thick, and it really is that thick, dark smoke that we know means that it is torching trees and anything that is getting mm -hmm. in its way. So this is another video that shows those big flames from the firefighters in District 8. Um, and they are spread out. We know there are nine different agencies, uh, DNR as well, that are trying to get ahead of this fire. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Jane McCarthy. We are live tonight in Spokane Valley where the Upriver Beacon Fire is burning. Right now we are at Upriver Drive and Frederick Avenue. There's a roadblock here right now. Earlier from this vantage point, you could see the active fire burning. It has since moved to the northeast, but you're looking at video from earlier. Here's what we know right now. This fire burning about 120 acres. Now that was actually downgraded from the 200 acre estimate earlier this evening. We know one home has been lost. Multiple fire crews are on scene working this fire and state mobilization should be here to help in the morning. Right now, this fire is 0% contained. However, authorities tell us they have stopped the forward progression of this fire. There is also a line 50% around the fire, and that was created by a combination of dozers mm -hmm. and hand crews. So certainly some progress here tonight. And because of that progress, evacuation orders have been lowered tonight. Only three homes remain under that level three evacuation order tonight, meaning get out now. And we understand from officials that a fire crew is stationed at each one of those three homes, and they will stay there tonight to make sure they are protected. All the others have been lowered as well to level two. That's the area on this map south of Valley Springs, east of Shields Park and north of Upriver Drive. Level two evacuations mean people should be ready to leave at a moment's notice. Level one evacuations are in place for a wider area south of Bigelow Gulch Road and east of Argonne Road, which means be prepared to leave. So earlier today, the American Red Cross set up an evacuation shelter for people forced from their homes. A lot fewer people probably there at this hour. But if you are in need of a place to stay tonight, that shelter is set up at Bowdish Middle School in Spokane County. The address is 2109 Skipworth Drive. Right, we want to check in now with Crim 2's Amanda Rowley, who actually got a tour of the fire line earlier this evening. That's right. We went about 7 o'clock this evening, and once we got to the long drive way up. It was obviously very dry grass. That's the type of terrain they were up against. So once we got further in, you could see quite a bit of the land just charred black. A lot of the trees even still smoking. We even saw some flames. Take a look at some of those, the video that we took uh, from earlier today. Now when we were walking around still, as I mentioned, could see quite a bit of the smoke. But when we went a little bit deeper, we could see that home that was confirmed lost in the fire. We were unable to confirm with DNR if someone was actually living in the home at the time, but crews there were still spraying at the home, uh, put, trying to put out any of the flare ups. I mean, there were still flames on the building when we were there. And uh, one, one of the interesting things was uh, amazing to see that just maybe 100 yards away from the house that was destroyed was another home. Mm -hmm. And just just by sheer distance between the two. It was amazing to see that that other home wasn't touched by the fire at all, wasn't destroyed. Uh, we did see some folks packing up and taking their things to leave, obviously, to get to safety. But uh, again, just a very dead piece of land. I mean, it kind of went back quite a few ways. Firefighters were coming in and out, taking a break. I mean, they'd been up there hours in the heat. It's pretty mm -hmm. hot out here. Coming out here live again, it's a lot cooler right. than yes. we saw it today. Um, I mean, now now that we're standing here, you can smell the smoke before mm -hmm. we couldn't really smell it. So we're here on a hillside above Columbia Drive, and we've been here all afternoon on Columbia Drive, and we've seen a lot of people who live in this area just looking on and waiting to see what happened next. Now, 
Take a look at what the scene looked like earlier today. Fire crews were attacking this fire on all levels in the ground and in the air. And the people who live in this area were concerned about their homes and all they could really do was look on and wonder what was going to happen next. Now, some people decided to pack up and they simply waited to see what was going to happen next. Others packed up and they got out of there. Take a listen to what they had to say. Um, I guess I'm a little in shock. It's a little strange and different. I didn't expect to have a fire this close to my house. Um, so we're all, we all have different plans. My dad's planning on staying here and I am planning on leaving and staying with my boyfriend and my mom's staying with my grandparents. So we're, we're praying for the, for the workers to get this fire out, being that we're already supposed to be gone. So we're just packed and ready to go. We saw it on top of the hill. I thought, that's ways from the house. It's going to be a while before it gets there, but it's really moved fast. Well, you know, it certainly puts the, all those thoughts in your mind about what kinds of things do I need to collect and out of my home and get into my car so that we can be ready to leave. So that's that's definitely a concern at this point. And what's going through your mind right now as a homeowner, not really knowing what's going to happen next? All you think about is which direction is the wind blowing. Two years ago when that mountain went up, that was a scare. Um, but fires are part of living in the Northwest. At this hour, just looking around at some of the homes in here, it still appears that power is off for some folks. You just wait and you wait and when they start bringing the planes in, you know, and then you know game on. The planes flew overhead, a massive DC-10 at one point dousing the fire zone with that red retardant. On the west side of the road closures, some were met with uncertainty. I just really care about my daughter, really. She needs a place to stay. This man's family was packing up their stuff, not sure if they were to leave. He wanted to go see them, but was told for safety reasons, no can do by police. When I called them last, uh, they were packing up the vehicles, getting ready to go, waiting for an evacuation. And I haven't been able to get a hold of her since. As of earlier this evening, power was out for at least some people in neighborhoods to the north of the fire. Given the heat, it was a struggle for some. Others here were sadly used to fire scares like this. Oh, it was complete deja vu because we just went through this up here, you know, like three years ago. An unfortunate price to pay for living in an area like this. Just keep a defensible space and make sure you've got extra food and water because um, you just never know. You know, we have been keeping track of everything that you need to know about this upriver beacon fire. So for the very latest, you can head to creme.com or you can download our creme to mobile app. And remember, we'll also have continuing coverage tomorrow morning as well. So tune into creme to morning news from 5 to 7 a.m. And then on channel 22 from 7 to 9 a.m.